Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to look at the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Chris Kainde Wande. He's a chartered arbitrator. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we'll begin with the punch this morning, and the punch leads with corruption allegations. It says presidency attacks OBJ as opposition backs ex-president. Um, the writer here says federal government says Obasanjo lacks moral grounds to attack Tinubu. Opposition insists ex-leader right on corruption bad governance so Yamgul and i were just speaking about this this morning because it was part of our top trending stories and um you know one of the special advisors to the president had said um you know basson just time there was a lot of corruption the third term that he tried to bring also had just had a lot of confusion um to that but i want to get your take the fact that we are in 2024 Obasan just tenure was from 1999 to eight years later, yes. And then this is almost 20 years since he has left office. But then we're still talking about this instead of moving forward to what can be done to salvage this country that we have right now. Your thoughts, please. Well, um, let me start by saying that personally. Boston Joy is the person that so have happened to the hereafter and get bread. So, um, if you understand what I mean, he has very, been very, very consistent um, since his left office and uh, in his views about issues concerning Nigeria. He criticized um, late Yaradua on issues. He criticized the um, person that associated him with Lord Jonathan. And he even criticized also Buhari at several uh, fora. Even his criticism to some of us of this, this current government is coming too late. The person that we knew, probably because of age, mm -hmm. by now would have written five extensive letters to the president. He knows he's very good at writing letters. Yeah. He has not written a single one to President Bola to know that at the point people are just saying, uh, is it because he is a skinsman. Say we have said it time and time again that leave the messenger, look at the message. Yeah. All that Professor just said, is there any single one that is not right, that is not correct, that Nigerians are not feeling same? Area of insecurity, economic woes, and and all sorts of manner of policies, the, 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 the prior and error that this government have been, um, uh, have been uh, uh, doing or uh, has been implementing since he came to uh, this government came into office 29th of May 2023. We have moved from bad to worse in all indices. Tell me one single policy of this government that has impacted on the lives of Nigeria. So, Obasanjo you have been saying it. I was talking about you saying Obasanjo always in the Let us even look at indices. Obasanjo, when he came into office in 1999, Nigeria was a total economic mess. But by the time he left, Obasanjo had wrote, written off all Nigerian debts and even left about $16 billion in our coffers, which other, one, other people that came after him from that. You look at the economy, Nigeria was under one digit. Under one digit. In terms of in terms of, um, uh, economic growth, by the time he left, I think it was between five and uh, eight percent. I can't remember now. Obasanjo, we knew what we were doing in, uh, in this area of telecom, where we were, how we were queuing pre nineteen ninety nine at Nitel offices mm. to make phone calls. Today, Obasanjo was able to make sure that the telecom sector was reformed. Even ordinary Baba, organizer, Okada riders, since we were hearing those days when we were kids that they were doing it in the Republic and we thought it was not possible. Today, the, that single policy of that government, if you know the transformation that it has made in Nigeria, part in the economy of Nigeria, so and so many other things, all the so called economic um, and financial crime um, 
anti-graft uh, agencies. Uh, agencies. Mm. We are created by our passenger, and there's so many other things. During our passenger's time, the economy was so good that Nigerians were rejapai back to Nigeria. They were not Japanese, they were not going. People were coming back. It was during our passenger time that people started buying new cars. Able to afford the Tokumbo, Tokumbo card now. You can't where are you, where will you get the money? So it is rather unfortunate that even within the presidency themselves, that now with what the report that were coming out and the statement that came out today, the president even so is even is uh, even confused on those that speaks for it. Boala was appointed again as special advisor on communication or whatever. Now that's Chris proposes in terms of communication between him and Sonny Dari that was appointed to it. It is not the government is trying to uh, do a clarification on it. But my own take is that no matter whatever you say about a part of passenger. Obasanjo remains the most patriotic leader Nigeria ever had. We cannot see any level of nepotism on his part. Look at his appointment. Look at his economic team. They were bipartisan. He brought people, technicals from across the globe. That, it was this same Obasanjo that gave people like Ngozi Okenje Iwala. Yes. Uh, Ezekwe Sili. Mm -hmm. um, Erufai. Um, Ade Wumi. Uh, Akin Wumi, sorry. Akin Wumi. And even others, even uh, uh, Solulu. So, I think the government should just sit down. I thought, if I'm part of the government, or if I want to, I'm a part of, of um, a spokesperson of the government, I would have thought that the, what the president would have replied on person. That, yes, we've had you. We are not saying that all is rosy. It is very as rosy as we, everybody wants. But we are doing all we can to be able to look at the issues as it were and try to. Make sure that Nigeria get the best of life and get the best of dividends of democracy. He's talking about that Obasanjo was the most corrupt government. But you leave a Buhari government that this president practically proposed on Nigerians by supporting to be good, that became a total failure and the most, I, I, I don't know what to put it, the worst president I ever had in Nigeria in the best of Buhari. Even the same uh, uh, MA policy that they said that I am never have even come out now to uh, to also criticize the government on its economic policies. Yeah. I'm sure you have you've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we talking about? So for me, no matter whatever way and manner they want to reply a on of it, it will not remove him from the heart of Nigeria for he what he has done, both as a military leader as a civilian leader in Nigeria. Well, yeah, still on still on the punch newspaper. Even while we have heard that taxes and other things have shored up the um, the fortunes of Nigeria, we've seen federal government plans fresh 31 trillion naira borrowing. That's a, a headline there on the top left corner of uh, the punch newspaper. They are borrowing to even service the budget, remain, the remaining budget for this. And first, you go back to what, we are, what I'm saying. During Obasan George period, we never borrowed a dime to, mm. service, to service our budget. Our, um, uh, what is it now? Well, when, um, um, when you look at our debt, international debt, we are using close to, at the point, we're using close to 90% of our revenue to service debt, our debt. Then you ask you what is remaining. Most of the time, even at that point, during the worries, it was not even the debt we are servicing with about eighty percent. It is the it was the interest accruable from that loan that we, when this government came in in twenty twenty three, they told us that they will stop borrowing or bring it to the minimum, to the barest minimum. Our threshold in terms of debt is almost about one hundred and thirty trillion naira. Go and check. So this debt is not only is not only you and I that will pay this debt. It is even our children that and grandchildren that will not have. And you know that I remember what I said on this program a few, uh, few weeks ago when I said no na that money. So now how much? 
I was, I was just I was just pointing to you I'm going when you said you are remember, when you're an eye that will pay the debt. Remember me saying that remember remember me saying that mm. say they say oh now because me I know this side they say oh now oh, have a, say, oh, have a, told me go pay that kind of because I was not part of it. But that is how bad the situation has become. That instead of our leaders to, to put on their thinking cap and see how they can salvage the situation, was it a passenger that floated in Nile? Was it a passenger that removed subsidy? Was it a passenger that have made the um, our uh, when you look at inflation rates as of uh, the last um, the last rate that came out was it last week was it? I think it was about thirty three percent or how many percent was it? Where it has gone? That is how bad the situation. Do you know a passenger people were feeding? Are we feeding now? In terms of insecurity, can you move from one part of the state to the, even from here from Lagos to Badu to Akure? Now, you hold your heart uh, in your mouth before yeah. you can even travel. If not that, they will take it that whether you'll be kidnapped or not. Because other people don't even travel again. It's coming to Christmas. The people from my own part of the country, you can rest assured that over 80% of our, or 90% of us who normally go back to the village for pilgrimage every Christmas won't even be able to do that for so many reasons. Hmm. Oh, well, um, okay, so let's, let's check out this other one that says... Um, Default, 34 states, federal government, federal capital territory, shown 263 billion Naira UBEC grants. What do you think about this story? You know, after talking the last time, I like the way your voice dropped. <laughs> it was so obvious that all of us are, are in this together. Mm -hmm. So, yes, but let's come back to the UBEC. The problem is that the state government are not paying their own counter parts fund. What that law says is that if you beg you are entitled to if you are to one billion naira as a, um, from you beg for your primary school and secondary schools and other institutions in that is statutory what you get. But you as a governor or as a state will bring first of all pay fifty percent of that for you to be able to assess it. So what we say says is that you have to pay about 500 million to that one so that you can now receive 100 percent but what have they done they have refused to do that all the state governments just like the rightly said the state at first state including fcc what is wrong with our governors what is wrong with our leaders this is just free money waiting to be taken and you go to most of these states and see the dilapidated nature of primary schools in those states, secondary schools, where children are staying under trees to learn. There have been instances where you have seen children are sitting on bare floor in those states. You have seen where some of them carry stone to sit down. Where they don't have uh, they, to write, they'll be bending down on the floor to write. But you know the most annoying part of it is the fact that most of our current leaders were beneficiaries of the free education policies of past government, uh. Second Republic in the First Republic. I was also I benefited from that, from my primary, from my secondary school to even my university. As a graduate from Lagos State University, I practically paid nothing because it was free education under the Jaconde regime. But most of these people that benefited from this policy and even scholarship to go and study abroad are the one bringing yeah. us on our knees. Yeah. And they're saying, come and take this phone, and they cannot pay their counterparts, and you ask more than If alone, what they are spending, what they are collecting as a good good, that alone is, is enough. It is very, very enough to pay to, to, to buy, but they won't do that. I think, you don't believe that some of our leaders are deliberately, deliberately um, trying to improve our Nigerian citizens and even children. Look at but, the imaginary system in the north. Yeah, because I wanted to just yeah, yes, I, I, I wanted to just even speak on the fact that because this is also on the Guardian, um, and it says eighteen million out of school children. So isn't this where they are supposed to know that it's an emergency at this point? We have so many. In fact, the one of the highest in Africa, whereby the children are, are not in schools. Isn't this where they are supposed to say it's an emergency? Let's make sure that we can get these grants. Put these kids in school and just make sure that you know the educational system is working 
That is what I was saying. I was talking about the actors school children yeah. in Nigeria. Over eighty percent of that is in the north. Look mm. at one hundred and thirty-five billion is sitting in the sea big end well, waiting to be taken by these governors. Let us even leave those in the southern part because a lot they are doing a lot um, for primary and secondary school in education. What of those in the north? Free money for them to take and be able to use to improve the schools in the north and take these children out of the streets. But they are not interested. And I said it that there may be a deliberate attempt by some of our, by our leaders to make sure that these students who are the future um, future leaders don't get the best of education so that they continue to pop up in hand, going around begging. And the same this same person just said it before this, before his uh, uh, statement about the federal government, that with what is happening in the north, that we are sitting on a time bomb that in 10 years' time, the effects on Nigeria, especially the North, will be something as devastating as that we cannot be able to handle. Look at the, um, the so-called new terrorist group, the Kawara or whatever they call it. Okay. Most yeah. of them, they are doing a lot of recruitment of children. Now, of course, when you when you, you live in abject poverty, and you cannot be able to fend for yourself, your parents cannot be able to fend for you, any little kind of induce, uh, inducement, we of course trigger you with um, uh, switching allegiance, and that is what is happening. And that is why you are seeing the insurgency in the north rising. I saw a video a few days ago of an encounter between the uh, military and the bandits in the north. Most of the children that were carrying all this AK 47 or whatever they were carrying, they are just under 16. You need wow. to see them under 16. That video was not public, was not shown. I repeat, it's because all over social media, I received it and I saw it. So let us do the needful. As I always say, the rich cannot sleep because the poor are away. <laughs> well, um, on the Vanguard newspaper, LCCI, Asbon, analyst, others pick holes in the 2025 budget. The writers, writers here are saying, it will um, take magic wand to succeed. That's according to Asborn. And funding will be a challenge. That's according to a financial analyst. And um, we already know there will be no voice from the National Assembly that will go against it because uh, uh, the person might be suspended or, or may, made to fa face other disciplinary actions from the, the National Assembly. So I don't know. 2025 budget was just presented a few days ago and they are already holes that are being picked. I wonder who is consulted anytime very major th decisions are taken in Nigeria. I don't know if the budget has been presented. It has not been presented to the National Assembly. I think what was done was the Federal Executive Council approved that budget. So I think the next thing is for them to transmit it to the uh, National Assembly. But for me, that budget is dead on arrival. Because if you look at the indices that that budget was predicated upon, then it is, you see that it probably is not any. First and foremost, we are looking at an oil, a crude oil output of benchmark of 2.06 2 million barrel uh, daily. The NSA told us uh, a few weeks ago that we, now we are hitting the 1.8 million barrel threshold. The shortfall, where are you going to get it from? With the level of vandalism going on in uh, in the in the Niger Delta and oil theft. And to be able to clip that, that's going to be a problem. That is why. It has a benchmark of I think about 70 75, dollars. 75 dollars. Okay, okay, 75, I mean, 75 yes. right? Yeah. How that how that is achievable, I don't know. Currently, how much is the price? Of, uh, uh, of that is on one part, but you also realize that when I was talking about the shortfall and the ability to be able to put it up, even the Dangote refinery that we have in Nigeria doesn't have enough crude to be able to service this refinery. Then, with the import, don't also forget that some of these crude, except we've finished paying it off, have already been mortgaged by the past administration to collect loan. So most of them, whatever we pay, whatever we are producing, we don't chop the money already. We don't collect money chop. 
So it is obligatory for us to be supplying those. So when you look at all this, then you ask yourself, but the most annoying part is that within that budget, we have also had an input of how much we are going to borrow. You are even forgetting, Chris, that they, they pecked the dollar at 1,400 1, naira to a dollar. Right now, it's about 1,750. Yeah. Yes. You know, I know there were three. Thank you very much, my brother, for bringing up because I know there were three. I was just thinking of the third one. I couldn't mm. get it. Presently, dollar, naira to dollar is 1,700. So what, which magic, magic one are they using? To mm. make it as 1,400. So you just see that these guys are just, they are just banditing figures around and just trying to save us. I wish them well. If they think that they can be able to implement it, all well and good. But the most annoying part of it is that just as you, what you, as you have, the, those that were elected to be our mouthpiece, those that are supposed to scrutinize this and say, no, this is not possible, this is not the right way to go. The National Assembly, your National Assembly, the House of Representatives and Senate, we, of course, give a round of applause and stamp this uh, budget without the worst, you know, the worst case scenario. They will, do. they will not pass it the way it is, so they are going to put their own again and increase it to a certain level so that there can be an underlying, uh, underlining negotiation with the executive, which they will allow them, then they will pass it. Then we go back to where we But what I thought we'll be looking at for me is out of that budget. How much is being voted for capital projects and how much is being voted for concurrent? Mm. Then you look at it also finally from the point of implementation. Our, implement, our budget uh, implementation in the last 20 years probably has not crossed the 45% threshold. Implementation is what I'm talking about. Mm. It has not crossed this 45% threshold. Then you ask yourself, what is the sense of, um, uh, of presenting a budget that you know you cannot implement? It's a big challenge. Yeah. And then you even hear of the whole budget padding and, mm, and that's all what of that. Said, yeah. Yeah, uh, I said it now. Yeah. I said it. I said, of course, they're going to pad. They're going to pad. That, yeah. is, that one, the padding is done at the National Assembly. Of course, you know. Mm. All right. So let's take this final one from the Daily Trust. So it leads with Northern Reps raise fresh concerns over tax reform bills. The writer here says, say, region plagued by insecurity, low productivity. It's unfair for Lagos, Rivers, FCT to have 70% VAT proceeds, so VAT proceeds, FIRS, BOSS, and finally will be guided by a national interest, and that is according to Dogua. So your take on this, please, as we wrap it up. Why we criticize this government for most of the services and some of the things that we're doing since it came to power? I personally believe that this task reform bill it's one of the best things that ever happened to Nigeria. And I'll tell you why. Because most people don't even understand what it's all about. This task the regime is talking about derivations. If you understand what I mean, what I mean is that every state will get the level of task based on what it generates. Mm. Unlike before. What, what most of the northern leaders say, oh, bring it and then let's put it in the pool, then we share. No. That is what this tax is talking about. So, if you are talking about, you say you are in uh, whatever state, let's say you are in Kaduna State, you are generating, um, you are generating a uh, hundred million every month. It is based on that hundred million that we are going to get. They are going to, um, you are going to get your tax, and that will be distributed among. If Lagos is generating seven hundred billion, it is going to be that. So, it's still a, a situation where. In some state will be generating, and others will just sit back and will not do anything about their internal uh, IGR and waiting every month so that every other big state now bring to the poll and we share those days. And when you now say that, oh, in the north is not the populist state, in the north, if you say Lagos, for example, they are not an in, in Lagos. So if Lagos is benefiting, well, I know it is not just for Lagos state, it is for everybody. In Lagos, including myself, that is from from uh, Imo State, including my brother, that is from Crossover, and you, my sister, from Data. We are all Lagosian. But I think why we are doing it, since this is the way we want to go. But I think we should not take it further. Now, also remove this state of origin thing that has been people in Nigeria. Since we have said wherever you are and whatever you generate, 
So if my tax, I'm paying my tax in Lagos, and Lagos is generating, why can't I, as an Indian man, cause things in Lagos when it comes to political and election? Rather than telling me, go back to your village in Nobu, we are not from Lagos. If you can collect my money in Lagos, what stop me from also being an Indian as an Indian? But as I said, if this is properly handled, this is the best way to be able to go about that is our task regime. Because in these instances, where some people say they don't drink beer, they say they, they, they say they know we are into Sharia, we don't take beer, we But the money that they realize from beer and all that is the, you still share and take out of it. Mm. You see, I, I don't understand if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes, that government. So, so I feel that it is the best way, but I think the government should do more by trying to engage in some of those that oppose it and see whether they can win the move. But for me, this is the way to go. Yeah, I think it's quite fair, to be honest. Mm. Quite fair. All right, this is how much we can take on this segment right now. Chris, thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our program. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day, Chris. Have, Have a wonderful day, day Chris. <laughs> Have a wonderful <laughs> day, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, so we're speaking with Chris Kende Wandu. He's a chartered arbitrator, and we've just been taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing the taxes and how oil has jacked up federal government's revenue by 76%. Please stay with us. <laughs>